Hello everyone, this is Ray Kelly with Miniman Empire Automation Systems. Today, we want to talk about the BNR Acapo 60 system. I wanted to thank BNR for giving us this demo so we can get some hands-on experience with the unit. You'll see in the far corner there, the Acapo 60 controller. This is the X20 PLC head unit. We have two shuttles and two segments along with a BNR HMI that has an application already running on the system. So we'll start off with the anti-slosh demonstration. You'll see them get into alignment. The rear shuttle is going to accelerate very rapidly and the front shuttle is going to do it more smoothly. The gains here is that the liquid in the rear shuttle is waving back and forth, it is sloshing, while the one in front is not. So this is nice because we can get individual control of the XL decel parameters for each shuttle at any time. So we can run up to seven, eight shuttles and 200 segments off of one Acapo 60 controller and we have that discrete control, that dynamic control of each shuttle. The next one I'll show you is this force control system here. So right now we put it into a free mode in the X axis. So I'm able to move these by hand in the X, but not the Y. Same is true over here. We can recreate the same thing in the Y axis. or both. So this freedom of control in one or two axes is very nice, maybe because your station, your tooling needs some compensation built into it. There's a little misalignment between the product and the tooling, and you can now put this into a free float mode, allowing it to align itself. The next thing I'll do is the spin and rotate, which I'll take these off. They're gonna kind of get into the middle of the segments and start spinning. Here, we can do up to 800 RPM on one shuttle and have discrete control down to 0.1 degrees for a given shuttle. So that's really nice if you want to remove some of the actuation on your external stations. You no longer need a servo or a rotary actuator. You can sort of leverage the shuttle to, for that rotation motion while sort of coming down with an XC motion. Maybe you're putting a cap on or doing some sort of lidding operation. Kind of go back to the center position there. If I go over to the weight functionality. So we've shown force before. Here we can show how we can do weights. So as I apply pressure onto the shuttle, you'll see the screen on the right there is picking up my pressure. So if you did want to weigh your product, maybe confirm product volume or count, you can use the weight functionality plus or minus one gram out of the box, but we can get more precise if we were to calibrate the shuttle and your application specifically. Another one I'll show here is the slide function. And they're showing that we can coordinate motion between shuttles back and forth. There's even the ability to sort of create a convoy functionality if you wanted shuttles to work together. So with this sort of motion, we can sort of see also that we can use all the space on this segment, plus or minus five microns. So instead of having discrete stations in an indexer, we can sort of decide anywhere on that segment is a valid place to do, to do work. So it allows for a lot of space saving opportunity. And you know what, we're maintenance free. There's nothing happening underneath there in terms of touching. So we're able to, you know, sort of slide this piece of paper underneath and notice that there's nothing happening, there's no touch, there's no, nothing going on there. So you don't have wearing parts, there's no contamination. If you wanted to have a more hygienic design, this is definitely a good product for you. I'll go over here to land. So the shuttles will get in position and I can tell the shuttle to land. So you'll see on the right here, the shuttle's at one millimeter on this side and the other shuttle is at zero. So this one is already touching the surface, and this one here is not, but it will sense and feel the pressure. The shuttles have the ability to handle RX and RY rotation too, so you do get that six degrees of freedom, uh, about three degrees each way. So if you're in a turn or a curve, you can sort of camber the shuttle in to keep your product or your media in a nice position as you're making a turn. I'll stop that application. 
Another one here is leveling. So you see there, there's a bit of a vibration occurring for the shuttles. If you have any aggregate or media, or maybe salt, pet food, or something else like that that you want to self-level out, it's a built-in actuation on the system. So we've gone through these anti-slosh, spin and rotate, force control, weighing, sliding back and forth. We've done landing. I'll show you a little bit of some general motions here for cycling. So here you'll see kind of like a racetrack motion. So you can put different stations at the perimeter, just showing the various motions here in coordination. And note that all this is being controlled by that 6D controller. So uh, collision avoidance, that path generation, that any recovery se sequence that needs to occur are gonna be handled by that 6D controller while the head unit is only sort of dictating what recipe to run. There's a decentralized control system going on here. So each segment has own little brain and that's how it's able to control those coils individually. And our last function here we haven't run yet is the wave function. And this really just demonstrates the system's ability to control that RX or Y axis and coordinate that motion together. So, oh, stop that routine. Well, thank you for watching this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Miniman Empire Automation Systems.